What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York, invading California for NAM 2020. We are here with Lee of Born of Osiris. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah. It's so awesome to have you here. You, we were talking a little bit before the simulation. Uh, is, it's not no longer really a double album series. Uh, is it going to be like its own sort of thing at this point, or is it going to have any relation to the simulation at all? Yeah, so the, we had 16 songs for the simulation. It was going to be simulation one and two. Um, and, uh, yeah, we basically... We were going to do eight at a time, and the goal was basically that, you know, like, people on the radio and stuff, they'll do one song at a time, or singles, or they'll do, like, and then it'll, when all of them are out, then they'll put the album, basically giving each song its moment. So when we had 16 songs, we were like, I don't know if we want to do one record, because um, people listen to the four, like the first four tracks a million times, and they never hear track 13 ever, or whatever. So we wanted each song to have its moment, so we are going to do two eight-song releases, Simulation 1 and 2, and then um, in the process of... Uh, after the first one came out we just wrote a bunch more music so instead of being another eight song it's now it's 14 songs and we are going to release it all in one bulk but i'm not sure it's going to be simulation 2 anymore so it'll have some of the songs but it might be its own identity with its own name and everything like that well i've always thought born of osiris's music is on the for, for fairly more experimental side it says you know touring with deathcore bands but metalcore bands and so on and so forth so i think it's fair to say you guys have never really been afraid to try new things and go outside the box right yeah, not us, you know. I think metal fans can be a little weirded out by anything new or experimental uh, outside of the music itself. But yeah, I mean, even when you release one song or if I put out like an EP, people are like, where's the album? So there's that fan base that wants the album. Then there's like the more broad fan base that listens to the radio that are used to one song at a time from an artist or a single like that. Um, so, you know, I don't know if there's a right and a wrong. We try everything. And the last time we put out a long record was, you know, maybe six years ago so we figured we'll just give him one of those and uh yeah. since the last one was eight songs yeah and uh so now moving on to the guitar work first off with your guitar playing style which i find so unique having very progressive elements and riff styles do you have like a musical theory element like i'm working off of this scale and this chord progression or is your guitar work rather like improvised in a way so when i first started playing guitar i took like five or six years of guitar lessons and so at the time i was reading sheet music so it's like you could just like anything a piano player would read or anything like that. But then, like, five years into my, my lessons, they came out with, you know, tablature, which you can teach someone in three minutes how to read, you know, which is cool. I'm not complaining. But so the theory I learned up until that point was more, it's almost outdated at that time. So I know theory, but not uh, in the way that, like, since then I just write with my ear. And so I've actually had, like, little things happen where on my last solo record, the first track, the guy who was mixing it wrote me and he's like, this is an interesting note choice. And I was like, oh shit, I, I might have to pitch it up because I already tracked it and I can't re-record it right now. And he's like, no, we're leaving. And like, so little accidents happen when I'm not boxed in by theory. I think it's definitely good to know. And I learned it the first five years of playing guitars, but yeah. the last 10 years of my career, I, I don't lead with it, you know? So I think it's good to know, bad to put yourself inside of a box, but good to know if you're doing something that is definitely wrong, if your ear doesn't spot it. So um, I have basic knowledge of it, but um, uh, you know, I don't lead with it yeah, by any chance. It doesn't dictate you. And moving on to the Kiesel. So I actually just uh, interviewed a couple of artists with Kiesel. Like I just interviewed Arch Spire actually before coming here. And uh, I was curious, so what is it about Kiesel guitars that ultimately, uh, is it like more like the body? Is it the sound? What is it about Kiesel that ultimately uh, draws you to you them? You know, it's funny how it all started. Like I was with a guitar company and Jeff wrote me and he said, hey, I want to send you guitars. Um, if you don't like them, send them back. If you like them, cool. So honestly, the relationship started in a way where he sent me like a thing saying like let me just prove to you that this is cool so what drew me was almost him calling my phone um and then he sent me a bunch of guitars he sent me th they were very different there was like the more of a, a crescent style shape and then he sent a dc which ultimately spawned my first signature with them this particular dc he sent me and i love the tone of it so much that actually years later we emulated the tone of this old pickup that he sent in this first guitar ever it became the uh, the illusionist bridge pickup that you see here today. It's a little different than that one, but that was the, the the start of it. But it sounded so good that I wrote a song like that day off that guitar, and um, it just told me, yeah, I'd like to end up with a signature. And he was like, you know, play for you know a year. We'll talk about it. Cause it's not necessarily a good look when people say, hey, I'm with this company now, and here's my signature. And it's like you weren't you weren't even here until the signature was a thing. So play the DC for a little bit. Uh, the tone about it was great about it. Also, like even the pickups too. Um, I was talking to like Bare Knuckle and other great companies and he was just like also let me prove it to you that my pickups are awesome too because for a while like not sure if they were known for their pickups or anything but he's like I'm working more on my pickups and so the whole relationship was hey check this out let me show you that this is cool 
and it's just been a natural progression. And since then, he's at my wedding, um, just like, just serious family. I, they always say like join the family, and that's their thing. But they really treat you like it when you are a part of the team. So, um, guitars obviously top quality, um, American made, beautiful, beautiful piece of wood from all over the world. And like even this pale moon ebony, for a while this was hard to get. Like uh, it's just top quality everything. And when you have a good team of people there as well, it's just like something you never want to go without. Absolutely. So before we go, I'd like to thank you so much for your time today. Is there just anything else with Born of Osiris you would like to promote in terms of tours or uh, when could we be expecting some new music, if you're allowed to say? Yeah, I would say the summertime. Um, nothing official. I'm not hiding anything, but where we are in the process now, finishing vocals this week um, in L.A., I would say by the time it gets mixed and released in the summertime, I also just finished up my second solo album. And we're going to wait for that to come out probably a couple of months after Born. So there'll be a lot of stuff coming this year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lee. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. Lee of Born of Osiris, check out the simulation. If you haven't already, big shout out to Kiesel Guitars. Be sure to check them out. This is Alex from Heavy New York, invading California for NAM 2020. We'll see you next time.